بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس ٹوڈے از دا فورتھ لیکچر آف یور سبجیکٹ رپورٹ رائٹنگ اسکلس ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس ان دا فرسٹ تھری لیکچرز وی اسٹارٹیڈ ود ڈیفائننگ دا رپورٹس اینڈ دین وی موڈ آن ٹو دا ڈفرینٹ ہینڈس ٹو دا ڈفرینٹ ٹائپس آف رپورٹس After that, we discussed what are the various qualities that should be added to your report in order to attract your receiver or in order to get your communication process converted into a successful communication process and which communication process that you initiated by writing a report as a writer, as a sender and that report was then supposed to be read by a receiver and your communication process will become a successful communication process if you get the desired feedback from your receiver and to get that desired feedback you needed to add some qualities to your reports which we discussed under the heading of seven C's in detail in the first the second and the third lecture I suppose Dear students, today we would be discussing what are the main three parts of a report. Your report can either be a long report or it can be a short report. Long report or a formal report, uh, you can use the word formal for a long report and a long report for the word formal report. Similarly, short reports are sometimes uh, called informal reports and informal reports are sometimes called the short reports and the difference between the two is that of the length a short report normally cannot exceed 10 pages and a long report cannot be uh, cannot be a report that is having less than 10 pages and this course book in front of you is an example of a long report beginning from the length of 10 pages they can be having a length of 1000 pages this book is having about 600 pages and is an example of a long report example of a formal report one difference between these two types formal report and informal report is that of the length and the other difference is there are some additional parts in the formal reports for example there are some supplemental parts there is a preface there might be appendix cover fly title fly cover page etc that we would be discussing later on at the moment we would be discussing what are the basic three portions of a report that are always existing whether you are writing a formal report or you are writing an informal report these three parts are as you can see on the slide introduction body and terminal section a report comprised whether you are writing a formal report or you are writing an informal report whether you are writing a long report or you are writing a short report it is having these three parts normally always introduction body and terminal section now what are the different arrangements of these three parts available or possible uh, for uh, the reports should we always be keeping the introduction in the beginning and should we always be keeping the text in the center or should we always be keeping the terminal section in the end there are no there are two arrangements possible one arrangement is the inductive arrangement of these three parts of the report and the other arrangement is called the deductive arrangement of these three parts of the report let us see what is meant by deductive arrangement of these three parts of a report which three parts introduction text and terminal section 
as you can see on the slide in deductive arrangement we are having two shapes it can begin with a terminal section you can first write the terminal section then you can move on to the introduction portion and then in the end it's the text we are discussing the deductive arrangement or the other way around you can begin with introduction then you can move on to the terminal section and in the end again it's the text so in deductive arrangement text the detailed the most detailed portion of the report is always at the end and the other arrangement that is available to you for writing a report for these three parts introduction text and conclusion is the inductive arrangement that is the normal um, style beginning with introduction moving on to the text portion and then the last one is the terminal section why to choose deductive arrangement dear students and why to choose the inductive arrangement where to choose the deductive arrangement for writing your report and where to choose the inductive arrangement for writing your report it depends on the circumstances there are different circumstances that are existing around for example if you somehow want to you are the writer of the report and you somehow want to show the results first of course then you would be selecting the deductive arrangement where the results are in the beginning deductive arrangement where the terminal section or the introduction portion they are in the beginning and text is always at the end if you want to for any reason for example if your result is so astonishing or it matches the will of the receiver or it's a good news and you want to announce that good news first so you would be putting the terminal section in the beginning and then you will be moving to the introduction portion depending on any of the two arrangements of the deductive style you pick up and the end portion would be the text okay if the situation is such that you need to give the details first you need to convince your receiver first or convince your authorities first for whatever results you are showing then there of course you will be selecting the inductive arrangement beginning with introduction moving on to the convincing long portion of the facts and figures of the text and then moving to the result portion the terminal section then it depends on the nature of the authorities you are having as well for example if the nature of uh, your boss the person who has asked you to write a report is such that he wants you to produce and show the results quickly quickly then again you are having no choice you would be picking up the deductive arrangement then if you are having short time and in that short time you have to implement the results of your report somehow you have to make other people implement the recommendations of your report you have to show the results quickly because of shortage of time then again you would be picking up the deductive arrangement but if your authorities or your receivers are having such a mindset that they follow the they are a bit more formal they want to move step wise from point 1 to point 2 point 3 point 4 this is the way they want it in a bit more formal fashion they want everything in the routine in the set with the set procedures with the set parameters then again you are having no choice you have to pick up the already set patterned 
uh, inductive arrangement of the report. Then dear students, if somehow the results that you are showing in your report they come under the category of a bad news they are not good to hear they are not good to read or they do not match the will of your authorities of or your receivers again you would have to put the results in some hidden position you would have to begin with introduction move on to the text portion then go to the terminal section with the results again you are selecting what the inductive pattern so we simply discussed some of the different situations that you might be facing where you would be either selecting the inductive arrangement of the report or the deductive arrangement of the report dear students now we would be discussing what can what can be included in these three different parts of the report we started with um, nominating the three parts of the report the introduction the text and the terminal section then we discussed the different arrangements possible now we are going to discuss that what should be included in which part what should we write in which part what are the various things that should be added to the introduction portion what are the various things that should be added to the text portion and what are the various things that should be added to the terminal section beginning with introduction remember one thing introduction portion for a very short report which itself is a report of say two paragraphs or a single page you can skip the introduction portion as well and directly move to the text and the terminal section but normally this part is added now what should be added this in to this introduction portion of the report number 1 that you always have to write is what is the purpose of writing this report you do add the purpose of writing that report in the introduction portion for example if you are writing a report to find out the causes of high turnover rate in your organization the purpose is to find out the causes of high turnover rate in your organization so you have to mention this purpose in the introduction section of your report why people are leaving the job so quickly why they are not staying long in your organization why this high turnover rate add that purpose to the introduction portion then you can add one more thing in the introduction portion that is authorization what is authorization i in the first um, lecture i told you uh, that um reports can be authorized reports and voluntary reports and i told you the difference between the two a voluntary report is the one which you are writing on your own initiative nobody has asked you to write that report you are doing it out of your own goodwill and an authorized report is something which you are writing either on the request of somebody else or on the instructions of somebody else your authorities so if your report is an authorized report then you have to add that authorization part as well that on the authorization of this authority this report is being written in the introduction portion again then background in the introduction portion you can add up the background of the problem as well for example again picking up the same example of the that you are writing a report on to find out the causes of high turnover rate in your organization so what is the background of this problem you can add up for example the background is for the last 10 years it is being noticed that none of the employees stays longer than 2 years in our organization because of which we have to hire new people we have to train them again the working of the organization is also suffering and the credibility of the organization is also suffering so this is making what the background of the problem that you are mentioning in the introduction portion of your report 
then sources dear students this is a very important point sources you can mention the various sources that you that you simply tried or that you simply accessed in order to get or get, gather the data facts and figures for your report and before moving on to the other portions that you should be adding up to the introduction portion of your report you should know something in detail about what do we mean by sources this normally comes under the pre writing techniques that whenever you want to gather some facts and figures for your report you are supposed to go for some research you are supposed to go for some research but before moving on to that research you start with something that is called brainstorming you are sitting somewhere you have been given some task to write a report on any issue the first thing is brainstorming you would be sitting on your table and thinking why what can be the what can be the various causes for this high turnover rate in this organization brainstorming probing your own thought penning them down roughly this can be the cause this can be the cause the timings can be the cause the pay scale can be the cause and the location can be the cause the environment can be the cause brainstorming then comes mind mapping you will be arranging those ideas in order for example first you were having in your mind what 1 5 8 10 52 56 29 35 numbers but not in order ideas but not in order but now this mind mapping is the point where you would be giving them a sequence 1 2 3 4 5 6 the the linked up ideas at one place getting my point this was mind mapping after that you would be simply writing down a rough outline based on these two things brainstorming mind mapping rough outline here now after writing this rough outline you would be going for research you would be checking your ideas for their validity whether whatever you thought might be the reason of high turnover rate is correct is valid or not is a fact or not a fact for that you would have to go for research now there are two types two types of research mechanisms existing one the primary research and second the secondary research in secondary research what do you do you gather the data from already published sources for example if your organization is having some magazines issued you can consult those magazines then for example you are gathering some data from some newspapers that are already published from internet that is already available to all now gathering the data from such sources which are already public sources we are discussing the point sources what is meant by sources from the sources which are already public known to everyone already then such research is called the secondary research but if you gather the data from such sources which are not public which are secret and to have an access to which you need the permission of some authorities for example you want to see some files of isi and you are having a written permission to access those files those files are not available for public here you are accessing some secret document of your organization as well then this comes under the heading of primary research you are gathering the data through primary research then if you are interviewing the people directly of your organization 
what is the reason what do you think is the reason of high turnover rate in your organization in this organization what are the various problems that you are facing and what have been the various problems that your colleagues have been facing you are directly interviewing the person who is who was affected so you are gathering the data collecting the facts through again primary research this is again nominated as primary research if you yourself are experimenting for example you decided that i would be spending some day myself some months myself in this organization to exactly know what is the reason of the high turnover rate you are experimenting yourself analyzing yourself observing yourself again first hand data again this would be coming under the primary research section for example if you are writing a report on the on comparing the quality of sitara textile and uh, um and and there must be another textile in my mind lumna textile say and you are putting that cloth in front of you and putting hydrochloric acid in equal quantity with the same dilution on them and then checking what happened to sitara textile cloth and what happened to lumna textile cloth then you are experimenting yourself and whatever facts you gather out of that experiment again would come under the primary research section so sources which sources have you accessed to gather gather the data for your report you can add up those sources in the introduction portion but before i again move on to the different parts of the introduction section let me complete the pre writing techniques here you have gathered what the data through primary research and secondary research so you are having some data on this side some facts and figures on this side the facts and figures that you received after research and on the other side you are having a rough outline you would be now be comparing these two things the rough outline and the data collected through research and there would be some some there there would be some points there must be there you will be finding some points that would be added up to that rough outline and you will find some points that would have to be removed from the rough outline it's called trimming you will be comparing those th things and you will be trimming the rough outline adding the facts and figures to it to it and removing some uh excessive points not required in the rough outline and giving it the shape of a final outline so we were discussing what can be included coming back to the main topic what can be included in the introduction section of your report we discussed you can add the purpose you can add the authorization then you can add the sources you can add up the background and then yes you are having one more option as well for your introduction that is you can add up the brief mention of the results as well whether you are putting the terminal section in the beginning or not in the introduction section if you like it's optional you can give a brief hint of the results as well then in the introduction section you can add up the list of different topics that you would be discussing in the longest portion of the report that is the text what are the various topics what are the various things that should be that should be that would be rather discussed in the text portion of the report okay and i already told you that if a report report comprises of a total of one or two paragraphs or a report is totally of one page you can omit the introduction section as such okay dear students the body section the text section of the report is normally the longest always the longest section of the report and what this part this section of the report is having in it again it's having the entire data that you gathered the entire discussion that would that you would like to have on that data on those facts on those figures so this is the 
longest portion in which you will be objectively and impartially quoting the facts and figures and discussing them impartially. Then you might be having some important ideas and since um, the text portion is the longest portion of the report, the how to highlight the important words, the important phrases, the important ideas in the text portion. You can use it through, do it through headings. You can do it through the tool of uh, highlighting. You can uh, give the important ideas a bit more space. You can use underscores, you can use capitalization, you can use italics. And all these techniques can be used in order to highlight the important ideas there in your report, the text portion of your report. And important ideas can also be repeated as well. Remember one thing here, repetition is requirement. You are not repeating for the sake of repetition. If repetition is required to emphasize an idea, then you are repeating. It's something extra which is desirable. Then, in the text portion, you can add up the visual details, you can add up the graphs, and you can add up the tables as well. And since, dear students, this is the longest portion of the report. In the text section, it's very much appreciated if you use the topic sentences for all the paragraphs. And we discussed in detail in the last lectures what do we mean by topic sentences. Topic sentence normally is the beginning sentence of all the paragraphs and it represents the entire theme of the paragraph. So it's appreciated if you use proper, relevant, linked topic sentences for all the paragraphs of your text portion of the report. Then all the principles of seven C's should be duly applied to the text portion of the report. I told you just uh, 30 seconds ago that in the text portion you can add up headings. But remember one thing, your headings should be very much strong but at the same time your text should also be equally strong and should not be dependent on the headings for its existence. For example if you remove the headings your text should be so strong that it, um, it as if it never needed the headings. They should not be dependent on each other by the way. Headings should be placed over there, but in such a way that they can exist without each other. You should not be using headings at the cost of the quality of the text, as per the rules of the seven C's that we discussed for writing a report. Okay, the students, the last portion of the report is the, again, it's a short portion. And it is the terminal section. Remember one thing, terminal section is never labeled as terminal section. You either, either name or label it as conclusion, summary or recommendation. Okay. There, uh, there is a slight, you know, change in the shade of the meanings of these three words. Which three words? Uh, recommendation, summary and uh, conclusion. Summary is basically you are summing up, condensing the entire text, longest portion of the report. You are summarizing it simply. You are not giving any recommendations, you are simply summarizing. For example, you were writing an informative report in which you were gathering the data of the different people who worked in different years. Uh, in your organization and what were their pay scales and what were their designations and for how long did they work over there you're not analyzing any problem so when you would be writing an informative report in the end of that report the terminal section would simply be a summary of the facts conclusion 
if you are writing a conclusion then conclusion basically evaluates from the text evaluates from the text that through this research for example you are trying to analyze what the reasons of the high turnover rate in your organization and through the research mechanism that you pass through and the, the you gathered some facts and figures then you simply evaluate on the basis of those those facts and figures in the text portion that what are the various reasons for the high turnover rate of your organization moving a step further taking this conclusion to the recommendation level in conclusion you simply concluded and gave the reasons in recommendation you will be giving the solutions as well you will be suggesting some solutions as well this is recommendation now a terminal section can be an amalgam of all these three things what it can be a summary plus conclusion plus recommendation it can simply be a recommendation it can simply be a summary or it can simply be a conclusion recommendation or summary or a mix of the three or a mix of two of them dear students always remember that never add up anything new in the terminal section that you have not discussed in the text portion the terminal section is not supposed to launch some new idea this is simply supposed to be something coming out of the previous part of the report no new idea should be included in the terminal section of the report and what is meant by new idea that never was discussed in the previous part of the report and when you are summarizing in the terminal section you should be summarizing the ideas in the same order as they were discussed in the previous portion of the report i think it's quite clear dear students now we move on to the next very important uh, part of our lecture we discussed what are the various portions or three parts of the report existing the introduction text and the terminal section their arrangements and what are the pre-writing techniques and what are the various things that should be added in the terminal section in the text section and in the introduction section and we discussed in the text section that there is something we call headings that we should be using but why to use headings and if we have to use headings are there any rules and regulations that we should be following in order to use them or we should be use, using them haphazardly anywhere any time at any place in any in any position in any shape for using the headings as well yes there are some rules and regulations but before moving on to those rules and regulations you should know what are the various benefits of using those headings just imagine dear students if you are having this textbook in your hand without any heading and you have to read it all without headings what would you feel it would simply be like a nightmare But what is this you will find yourself in oblivion that means the reading for the reader will become difficult without headings and when you are writing a report you are a person who is in need to get the desired feedback from the readers and if you want to get the desired feedback from the readers you are supposed to make all the tasks easier for the readers and headings make reading easier then if your reader wants to simply go for a process of scanning for example i am not interested i am the receiver i am the reader i am not interested in reading the entire report i just want to specifically read that portion of the report that is telling me something about lahore then if the report is having the headings the proper headings i would 
straight away go go, go to the Lahore portion, read that part, and give my feedback. So. The person who has written that report with the headings has made the reading for me as a reader easier. So that person is having more chances to get the desired feedback from me. Now if this was scanning, if I want to go for skimming, that means I just want to quickly know the main idea of the entire report. If you are having, if you have properly placed the headings over there, simply by going through the topic sentences and the headings, I will gather that idea. I will exactly know what is the main idea of the report. I would not have to, I might not have to read the read each and every sentence of the report. Again, the reading was made easier for me by the use of headings. Now, are there any rules and regulations that are existing? for the use of headings and are there any types of headings existing yes dear students there are some rules and regulations that you should be following in order to use the different types of headings first you should know what are the different types of headings existing dear students there are four types of headings that are in fashion in use Number one is, I would be beginning with the topic headings. Although it is placed over here in the fourth, at the fourth number, but I would be beginning with the topic headings. A topic heading is basically um, that heading that is, that comprises of a noun in which you are using a noun as a heading. It is beginning with a noun for example history noun or short phrases history but beginning the phrase is also beginning with a noun history then it can be background then converting it into a phrase form history of the problem but again beginning with a noun then background issues again beginning with a noun so any heading that is using nouns in the beginning these headings would be nominated as topic headings then complete sentence heading as simple as that as is obvious from the name complete sentence having a subject and a verb if you are using a complete sentence as a heading then your heading would be called a complete sentence heading for example preparation is essential for our success for the outlining or one example then the other example as you can see is writer should take time when preparing for outlining so you are using complete sentences as headings so such headings are called complete sentence headings the next type dear students is the imperative sentence headings If you are using any such heading dear students which is beginning with a verb but in the form of a request or in the form of an order beginning with a verb for example take as you can see on the screen take time to outline take time somebody is requesting you or ordering you take time to outline then prepare ideas before writing prepare the word prepare is a verb requesting you or ordering you prepare ideas before writing then do your best again you are being asked to do something beginning with a verb play the game you're being again asked to do something beginning with a verb a request or an order play the game then color the wall beginning with the verb here the word color is not being used as a noun remember it's being used as a verb color the wall you're being asked to do something these are the examples of imperative headings last type the variant headings dear students variant headings normally are those headings which are beginning with a participle using ing using ing for example taking time to outline 
in imperative it was take time to outline here it is taking time to outline ing then preparing before outlining ing now these types of headings are called variant headings so four types existing topic headings complete sentence headings imperative headings and variant headings dear students these were the different four types of headings that we discussed next we would be moving on to the degrees of headings there is a difference between the types and degrees a degree of the heading um, is not dependent on the various parts of speech that it is using we we discussed the four types based on which parts of speech that heading is using it's using a verb it's using a noun it's using a participle it's using a complete sentence parts of speech which parts of speech it's using but when i talk about the degrees of headings it is decide the degree of a heading is decided on the basis of the placement of the heading where it is placed on the page on the basis of the capitalization mechanism of that heading and on the basis of whether it is underlined or not and on the basis of one more thing where the text is beginning from we are having five degrees of headings we are having five degrees of headings and i repeat again degrees depend on the positioning of the heading the capitalization mechanism of the headings whether the headings are underlined or not underlined and where from the text after the heading is beginning let us see we start with the first degree of heading dear students the first degree of heading is having all the letters capital is having all the letters capital and you are having two choices whether you place the first degree at the center of the page or you place it at the left margin let us see the word written in front of you is preparation preparation when you are writing like this look all the letters of this heading are capital they are at the center of the page and it is not underlined this is the first degree of heading but the type that it is using is as you can see the topic type it's using a noun the type is the topic type and the degree is the first degree let us see again Dear students, if you can see on the screen again, I have picked up the same word preparation, but I have placed it towards the left margin. All the letters are capital and it is underlined. This is also the first degree. You are having two options. 
for the first degree one you can place this heading at the center of the page all the letters are the capital r capital and it is not underlined and second it is placed towards the left margin and having all the letters capital and is underlined here also if you can see i have used the topic type i have used the topic type where a noun is being used as a heading okay another we are discussing the first degree of heading now the point left to be discussed in the first degree is where from the text should be beginning where from the text should be beginning the first degree of heading dear students should be having two lines for example here for example there was some text already existing above the first degree then what should be the space between the last word the last line of the text and the first degree of heading that you are using let us see you should be you should be leaving at least two lines above it after the text above the heading when you are using the first degree again writing the same type the same degree the same degree and the type topic you have left a space equivalent to two lines above the first degree of heading which you are using in the topic type and if you want to write some text after this heading you are again having the option of leaving you either would be leaving two lines after it or three lines after it and then write best one would be leaving two lines that means the text should begin from somewhere at this point now can you see the space here and the space here this is the space that i am talking about dear students we will be continuing in the next lecture um with the rest of the degrees of the headings and we would be using the different degrees in different types and in the next lecture we would be discussing that what is meant by parallelism parallelism in headings as well the parallel structure of the headings how to use the different types and degrees in a parallel way in your reports thank you so very much see you inshallah in the next lecture assalam alaikum